Well, it's Tuesday and we're in AD 29, event 47 of Christ's life. And we're looking at three different gospel accounts of uh, time that I would call death foretold. Uh, Jesus tells about the fact that he must die and be raised in three days. Uh, so we're in AD 29. Remember, we're about halfway through his public ministry, event 47. And it's found in Matthew 16, Mark 8, and Luke 9. And uh, Luke 9 is probably the most abbreviated of the uh, accounts of this event. And Mark is probably the most comprehensive, but we're going to supplement Mark with some of the things in Matthew. Uh, Christ has, remember, been in Caesarea Philippi. And there he's had a time of prayer. And uh, we, we know that he has... Um, got something on his heart that he has need to tell his disciples and he starts to teach them about how he must suffer die be rejected by the elders the priests and the scribes and killed and after three days he'd rise again now when you look at that section of scripture you realize that he's hinted at this but he has never come right out so bluntly and said this to his disciples and Certainly, he probably felt that his disciples needed to know why the religious leaders of the day would be rejecting him and killing him. Uh, so he, he's made this announcement. The Matthew account tells us that, that he has to go to Jerusalem to do this. So he's going to move out of the region of Galilee, his Galilean ministry, uh, in order for this to occur. So he gives them quite a bit of detail about the fact where it's going to happen uh, how much he told them that's not recorded in the writings here, we don't know. But uh, he's speaking very plainly, and so Peter, bless his heart, foot and mouth Peter, pulls Jesus aside and, and starts to say to him and rebuke him. And in Matthew, it tells us, uh, he's, he actually comes out and says, God forbid that this should happen. Uh, God forbid that this should happen to you. And uh, Jesus turns around and sees the other disciples that are obviously listening into this conversation. And uh, he says, get behind me, Satan. Uh, that had to take some wind out of Peter's sails for the Lord and Savior to call him Satan. He says, you're too much interested in man's will and not God's. Now, let me just stop here for a second. Oh, in Matthew, he says, uh, you're a stumbling block to me. Imagine how. His disciple felt when he was called a stumbling block besides being called Satan. But let me just stop here for a minute and tell you something. Something for application for all of our lives. If God has clearly told you that you need to do something, you need to do it. You don't need to go ask anybody else what they think. Now you need to be sure that if you think God has directly told you to do something, you need to go do it. On the other hand, if you're going to go around and getting advice, about something that God has already told you to do, uh, you shouldn't listen to them because uh, God's word should come ahead of anybody's advice. So let me give you some personal applications. I've had people come to me and say they're going to do such and such, and I've started to tell them why I thought that that was a good idea or why that was a bad idea. And then they said, but God told me to do it. And then I say, well, time out. <laughs> That's a whole different story. If God told you to do it, you don't need my advice, and what I have to say is not of any value at all if God told you to do it. And so I think we got to be careful when somebody talks about God's will uh, for their lives and uh, for our lives, for that matter. And we don't need to go around getting a bunch of other counsel if God really told us to do it. On the other hand, if you're not sure that it was God that told you, Righteous counsel is a very good thing, and uh, certainly Proverbs tells us that the counsel of many is uh, gaining of wisdom. Uh, so uh, I think it's very, very important for us to remember, if God said it, that settles it. That nobody else needs to be consulted. If God didn't say it, or you're not sure he said it, then counsel is wise. And it may well be it's what we want to do, and we're using God as a facade for what we want to do and I, I certainly have seen that in my counseling experience that God was just trying uh, to excuse me that a person was just trying to use God to justify doing what they wanted to do so uh, if you want to test it a little bit in your own life 
if it's against God's word, God didn't tell you to do it. Let me say that again. If it's against God's word, God didn't tell you to do it. Second thing is, if God clearly told you to do it and you're absolutely sure it was he, don't you confuse yourself with getting counsel, especially from people that are not in touch with God, but people that are not walking with God. Uh, you can you can get opinions on anything you want to in any way that you want to if you go around asking the right people that you know will give you those kind of answers. Uh, but always seek if you are not sure about God's will and what he's told you to do or whether you think it really was him, then bounce it off some godly counsel. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, people have come to me during my ministry and said, I think God wants me to quit my job and go to the mountains of North Carolina or Tennessee and build a retreat center. <laughs> and I laugh because that's what I've told people sometimes. <laughs> of course, in my early days as a Christian and my early days in ministry, uh, think about it. Who really wants to do that? Well, I really wanted to go to the mountains and, and thought that it would be fun to run a counseling center or a camp of some kind for Christians. But it wasn't what God told me to do. And uh, I'm so thankful that I didn't rush ahead and do that because I know it would have been a failure if God's not in it. So again, uh, here Jesus is clearly telling Peter, Peter, you're not thinking about God's interest. You're thinking about man's interest. You don't want me to leave. You don't want me to be killed. But God has a plan and it's for the redemption of man. And you're a stumbling block to that redemption plan. Imagine what would have happened if Peter had been successful. And of course that wouldn't have happened, but imagine what would have happened if Peter had been successful in talking Jesus out of the cross. We wouldn't be having this conversation today, would we? Well, that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.